I'm a butterfly. I'm a butterfly. I'm a big butterfly. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, 18 months ago, I discovered kayak, took a one-hour course, and then just went away for 600 kilometers across Belgium uh, on the waterways. So the beauty of my country, well, part of it, and also the trash. Uh, this is also trash. You can probably see it on the branches. You have plastic bags hanging. It's very hard to remove it, actually, plastic, when it's in the water. And a friend of mine told me, yeah, what you do is great. Uh, I've been kayaking a few days on the Wisła River in Poland. Uh, perhaps you should check that out. I'm an explorer, I'm an adventurer, I've been curious. A uh, few months fast forward, I came up with a plan of going down the river. It has been done before, so I said, oh, I'd like to find the world first, doing something a little bit harder. Found out that Mount Rizzi, uh, the summit of Poland, was nearby, just 150 kilometers away from the source of the river and decided to do the first summit to sea of the country, crossing it uh, by human power. So on the map, you're going to have the yellow part is 150 kilometers across the Tatras, the mountains and other mountain ranges and uh, forests. The red part is pack rafting for 50 kilometers, and then you just finish by 1,000 kilometers on the water. To prepare this, I just came to Poland, met a few friends on the way eager to help me, and went to the supermarket, and obviously what happens when I get out of the supermarket is like beep, 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 like how many times do you have that bag? I think it's about that many days, or about 25 times the muesli and, and, and so on for the food, but this is the, the food I packed for the entire journey. Uh, so I started with uh, Tomasz, which is a local adventurer. He spoke here, I think, last year or two years ago. We climbed Mount Rizzi. we started very early, like 2 p.m., on an uh, um, early May day, which is, for us Europeans, we'll think, okay, May, it's summer, but there's still some snow in the Tatras, although the, the mountains are very low. We got caught, actually, in a snowstorm and uh, made the summit uh, at uh, 6 p.m., went down in the darkness at 10 p.m. I made a small fall about 10 meters in the snow, and happy to be here to, to tell you about it. So. Uh, the next day was a bit better, I could really enjoy, because what I do as an adventure is like to see nice scenery, nice landscapes. So I like this photo of the this kind of mirror of uh, the mountain, Mount Rizzi, you cannot see it still in the fog. And also seeing uh, wildlife uh, on the way. That same day we passed a few saddles, uh, the weather got better and better, things that it's, it's May, so the snow is starting to melt down, and we met Kuba, a young uh, local al alpinist from the Tatras, and he told us, change your plans or your route, because where you want to go today, it is very too dangerous. We discussed for about an hour what to do, and then we, we took it a safe way, and I think we did well, because we heard a few helicopters passing uh, during the day on the other side of where we wanted to go. So, we got in kind of like a TEDx talk, a bit of a constraint of time, because we went actually around the last part of the Tatras. But anyway, a few weeks later, we reached um, Babia Gora, another summit on the way, and we continued walking across the forest, and went even further uh, to uh, Bar Barna Gora. Um, on, on the way, uh, one of the evenings, I had this nice spaghetti with water, and this uh, flavored pack of Polish soup, I thought it was f soup, but it was like kind of a bouillon. Very, f lots of flavor, very, very nice, I ate it. And the next day, my, f my, f my calves actually were completely swollen. Of course, my foot was soft the walking because we were in a hurry, walking very long days. Cut off a bit of my blisters. We all ate, so <laughs> I guess it's okay to show that. And um, yeah, so, because it was swollen, I put it in the air, I got on top of that a nice sunbird, very painful, very nice for walking, and resumed across the last villagers uh, towards the summit. And the, the last week, uh, I was kind of on my own uh, because Tomasz has a bit of problems, but he met me with a guide towards Barnagora, uh, where I took the GPS, uh, which is actually the mountain where the Wisla starts. So from there on, it's very easy. I just have to go down Poland. 
And um, the guard showed us the source. Uh, it was a real privilege to see this is the cairn where the source starts. And uh, from there, I just have to walk to Viswa. In Viswa town, I stopped. This is the emergency room. It was very uh, reassuring to see the picture above my head that I'm going to be treated well. And uh, actually, the doctors showed me and came back with a large syringe, about 10 centimeters, put it in, well, my ass, we can name it, inject more fluid, because, and then he said, um, you probably did something bad, but actually your kidneys stopped working. And I remembered of the soup of the other day. Actually, it was so salty that the salt blocked my kidneys, and actually I should be urinating a bit more, and everything of that fluid was in my cups. He told me, please stop walking for at least two days. I said, OK, I'm going to stop for at least two minutes, and put on my, ba my, pack, my uh, new dry suit. It was very hard when it's a new one and started paddling, because I was in Viswa. And here's me starting uh, very nice. One of the best parts, actually, where I had the most fun uh, paddling on this uh, stretch of the Vistula River. And you see the small dams behind. There are 200 of these, and you have to pass them, so you can kind of get out of the raft, jump in the water, or you just, when you have a possibility, just uh, try to fall down in the water, which is also very fun. To catch up with speed, I, I continued during the dark, and actually I'm very comfortable um, doing adventures in the dark because you don't see the danger in front of you, so you, it's very, you know, no fear, actually, you don't see it. Um, two days after, fast forward, uh, started a kayak, actually it was a kayak from a friend, never been, been into that kayak, never been on a river kayaking, and I said, okay, I'm gonna start going into the river, and there you go, I'm in the river, yes! A local pole helped me, you know, put the kayak back on the bank of the river, and I see when he, at that moment, and his eyes were, this Podroznik from Belgium, this adventure, is going to paddle 1,000 kilometers on the water. He's not even in the water, that he cannot even rest on the water. How the hell does he know really what he's going to do? Actually, yes, I, I, I think I knew it was a bit better, across the reservoir, across uh, the nature, and uh, the wind was a bit blowing that day. I had seven kilometers on the large reservoir uh, to the end of this reservoir. I uh, took a small break on this small platform to eat the energy bar, energy drinks, and I felt, a, uh, well, got very worried, actually, because um, I've never been on a lake before. It's actually, it's very new. We're talking about comfort zones. This is what I like to, to do, getting out of that. And um, just a bit before Auschwitz, I had a lot of fog, and actually the temperatures got negative uh, on the morning. So my kayak was freezing, my boots were freezing, everything was freezing. And anyway, I continued. Um, I'm very, um, how can I say, when I, was, uh, I like to be in the wild, and when I see humans, especially here, you a lot of me, I'm, I feel a bit weird and strange. So I didn't really stay in Krakow, I just went to Krakow because I had too many humans here, what I want is to see nature. I, I did um, a bit of stretching, of course, because, you know, I've been already paddling for a few days. And 90 kilometers after Krakow, after passing a few logs, there was enough water that the boat was following me. You have also here Natalie and Tomasz, and they were f doing a documentary uh, about uh, this adventure and filming me and taking photographs. A uh, few days la later, I arrived here in Warsaw, a few weeks before the soccer, and resumed. On the way down the, down the river, what we also did, we stopped like a few hours in small villages to, uh, to, well, to visit, and to, so I could have a little glimpse of Poland, not only the river, but also the people living. I call them the people of the water, the people living in the water. I was sleeping on the river, on the banks of the river, on sandbars and so on. Uh, sometimes we made a fire also, which was really great, like camp camping. Uh, I met a few people on the way uh, with boats, unexpected or expected boats. Uh, also, not scared of the pirates. There was a school with lots of tiny children's pirates, not afraid of that. And actually, I, I like the boat here. Um, I, I, if, if I was you, I would say I'd take the boat off them and I'd make a pub over there, like really hard to reach, where you can have a free beer when you arrive. 
Uh, Tomas here, uh, sometimes I was faster than, than the boat because you have many ways to go around Vrsa, around different islands. So he dragged me, he said, oh, you missed that village, we're going to go back. So he pulled me, and he ha Tomas has two hands, so one for me, one for a shot of vodka, of course. Well, when you're on the boat, you have not much to do, you know, they just be kept keeping watching me and, and drinking vodka. Um, I like the beavers that were jumping out of the water when I was nearby in the water. I like this tree. Perhaps this tree is probably now in the Baltic Sea because it has been eaten by the beavers. Uh, sandbars, a bit of exploration sometimes of the sandbars and so on. And like I said, um, I've never been on the river before and you might think, okay, I have to go here on the left to continue. Actually, I have to go straight. It is very hard to navigate where, you, where the river is so wide that you, you, have, you really come close to the trees to find your direction. Uh, expeditions mainly is that what I'll do is that I want to see nice scenery, so when I have a nice sunset, I'm very happy on the river. And I like to paddle also during the dark, moonrise, everything is still quiet, the river is mystical, and I'm part of it, I'm become part of this river. Uh, after a few weeks on the river, I was very, uh, well, my kayaking skills improved. I could drink water from the rain, paddle at the same time, and so on. And the only way to know where I was on the river was a small signpost. Here's 666. I hope it's not a, a good, uh, uh, a bad sign. But um, there's uh, signs along the way. So people, as I said, Tomas and the others filmed me. And um, a few weeks later, this is the last bridge before reaching Dansk. And this is the entire crew who helped me. So this expedition wouldn't be possible without all these people. Of course, I also saw trash in Poland. You see like a baby doll. And of course, uh, when there's a flood, some trash into the branches. What I want to say is that um, I really love this river, which is considered one of the last big wild river of Europe. And I think, and you are, most of you are Poles, and I don't know, someone here in the room or a group, you can constitute a group, I would like you to do something to enter the Vistula River as a World Heritage UNESCO site. I think this is possible, part of it, of the entire river. Uh, Hannah spoke this morning about the, the Baltic Sea. Well, trash that goes into the Vistula goes to the Baltic, goes to the, what we call the ocean jars, the plastic jars or plastic continents. Perhaps you heard about that. Uh, actually, the entire oceans are polluted by water, by uh, sorry, by plastic trash and other trash. We humans pour six million tons of plastic each year in the seas, eating and uh, by birds, fish, uh, arriving on really remote islands, even inhabited islands across the Pacific and other other oceans, uh, from big plastics to small plastic or fishing lines like plastic, uh, entangled fi fish or crabs. And this is what you can see on some islands. You see a lighter in there, caps of uh, bottles of you name it, whatever, or some pieces of plastic. So, sorry guys, you all have plastic in use if you eat fish. I do have plastic, I don't know how many grams. I don't know when my cancer will start, but um, I hope for long. So, yeah, of course, uh, if you have these kind of images, it makes you worry that you, this is from a pack of water. Uh, the, the, I guess the small turtle went through it and the turtle grew up and became like this. What I want now uh, for you to do is to consider about the Vistula River, what I said, uh, getting perhaps in the UNESCO as a site, and that as a big butterfly, I, you are now aware that uh, there's plastic in the ocean and I want you to really consider your human uh, said actions, it is time to really act when, when you consume plastic, is it recycling of trying not even to take the plastic back at the supermarket? You, you all know, th know this kind of um, actions you can take. And because you have been uh, in your comfort zone sitting and that I want you to act more, I would like to know who is willing to act and do an effort on plastic today and to stand up. So everyone who wants to stand up, I'm going to take a photo and, and say no, or let's say less plastic. I want you to stand up. I'm going to try to take a photo of the amount of people who want to stand up. Come on, guys. Who wants to stand up and do something? Who wants to be a butterfly like me? Who wants to save the world? Who wants to save the children, the planet, the wildlife, and that we can stay a bit more than a century on this planet? Jinkui.